Hi everyone, let's look into the big O notation today. This is a fundamental concept that every software engineer or a fresh graduate from college uh, should know in order to get a job at a big company. This is the definition that Wikipedia gives. As you can see, it's not really human friendly, I would say. So let's try to see what the big O notation actually is. So in few words, the big O notation is the analysis of an algorithm's performance as the input grows. That's the core concept. And which performance are we measuring? We are measuring the worst case. When we talk about technical interviews, 9 out of 10 times, your interviewer is actually going to ask you the worst case. That allows you to understand how your algorithm is going to perform given a big input. Let's actually look into the most common time complexities that you're going to come across during technical interviews. So the first one is the constant time complexity, which is big O of 1. This is the best one. What this means is that the runtime remains constant regardless of how big our input becomes. If we plot this on a graph, this is how it's going to look like. It's a constant line, no matter how many elements we add. The number of operations, they remain constant. This is actually really good. Uh, let's look at some examples, some actual code examples of operations that are constant. So here we have a list of numbers and we have an empty hash map. So let's look into this first operation, a equals to nums of 2. What this does is it retrieves an element from our list. And this actually is constant time because we actually define which position we want to retrieve. Even this one, uh, actually this doesn't exist. Let's say nums of 1, this is constant time. Uh, another constant time operation is inserting into a hash map and it's actually the same if we are retrieving from a hash map. This is an example of constant time operations. Another time complexity that is good to know is the logarithmic time complexity, which is big O of log n. So let's actually see what uh, this means. So you probably must have come across this when talking about trees. Here we have our binary tree. Let's say we want to search for that node. What usually happens when searching in a binary tree? Every time we query the, the binary tree, we get rid of half of the elements. So in this case, this half can be removed. Now we are here. Where is our element going to be? Oh, it's going to be on the left side. So we're going to get rid of the right hand side. Now we are here. Element is going to be on the right hand side. So we get rid of this part here. We actually have found our element. So as we can see, each time we went through a root node, we actually have the items we were searching for. And this takes log and time. So what this means is that even if the input was very big, millions or billions of nodes, and if we were looking for an element, our search pool would get halved every time. Let's see how it looks like on a graph. Eventually, the higher the input, the flatter this line is going to become because as I just said, no matter how big the input, uh, eventually this line is going to get not totally flat, but almost flat. In linear time complexity, the performance is directly proportional to the input size. So if the input doubles, the runtime doubles. If the input triples, the runtime also triples. This is actually a little worse than a logarithmic time. Let's see how this looks like on a graph. It's actually the formula of this graph is x equals to y. The bigger the input size, the more operations we have to solve. This is quite easy to understand. Usually we incur in linear time when we have to loop over, let's say, a list. Uh, let me actually show you with some code. Let's take as example this list nums. And let's say we had a for loop, so for i in nums, and we were printing each number. The time complexity of this algorithm is 
big O of n and this is because we are iterating over each element of our input. Let's say we were looking for a specific number in our list. Let's say we want, want to find 5. Uh, actually, let's say we want to find uh, 3. This operation is linear time. This is because 3 could possibly be here at the end. We don't know what the worst case could be. It could even be here. In which case, you know, the operation would take off one, but you don't know where this tree is going to be. So we have to think about the worst case. This algorithm has a worst case of big O of n, which is linear time. The next time complexity I want to talk about is linear rhythmic time complexity, which is big O n times log n. So this time complexity is actually... Uh, found usually in uh, sorting algorithms such as merge sort and quick sort. This time complexity is marginally better than linear time complexity. So let's actually plot it on a graph. So this is how n log n looks like plotted on a graph. So as you can see, it's slightly worse than big O of n. And we get this time complexity usually when uh, we are using a sorting algorithm. Another time complexity which you might encounter when uh, solving a problem is quadratic time complexity. So in this case, the performance grows with the square of the input size. And this is often uh, seen in nested loops. Uh, usually, let's say you have a, a matrix and you have two for loops for i, blah, blah, blah. And then you have another nested loop here. In this case, the time complexity of an algorithm that has a nested for loop is big O of n squared. It's not ideal. As you can see, the uh, time complexity grows exponentially. So this is how this looks like on a graph. As you can see, the curve starts getting steeper as the input increases. So it's not very efficient. So an exponential time complexity is big O of 2 to the power of n. And in this case, the performance grows exponentially as the input size increases. And this is actually highly uh, inefficient. This is how an exponential time complexity looks like plotted on a graph. So I'm running out of space, but let's add it here. So it's 2 to the power of n. Exponential time is usually encountered when we have some kind of recursive function. So let's say we had a recursive function with some method variables. We have a base case and then we have calls to the recursive function. So let's say we have a call here with some input variables and a call here. So this is when time becomes exponential in this case. The last time complexity uh, we are actually going to talk about is the factorial time complexity, which is big O of n factorial. The performance of the algorithm grows factorially with the input size, which is extremely inefficient. So this is how this looks like on a graph. It's actually here, it's worse than 2 to the power of n. So why is it worse? So let's say we have 5 factorial versus... 2 to the power of 5. So it's going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. In this case, this is going to be 2 times 2. In this case, this is 32 and this is 120. So as you can see, a factorial time complexity is the worst one in this case. So when are you actually going to encounter factorial time? Usually when we are dealing with permutations. And it, it's not really common. If you have a factorial time algorithm, it's okay to use it, but only if you have a, a really small input. Uh, it's not advisable to use it with big inputs. So in the end, uh, what you need to remember is that the best time complexity possible is big O of 1, which is constant time. And the worst one is the factorial one. These ones are acceptable, usually in an interview or even in, in real life cases. We should avoid these ones. Uh, this is the final graph. It's actually from uh, 
big annotation website. Uh, as you can see, algorithms over here are bad if they have that time complexity. These time complexities are good. I hope you found this clear. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.